Hi, I'm Gary White for Central Kentucky Television. I'm here with Lizzie Spaulding at the Marion County Extension Office, who is the Family and Consumer Science Agent here. And we are going to be making a Kushaw pie today, right? We are. Now, let's start off with saying, what is Kushaw? Right, most people don't know what it is, so we're going to start off by talking about it. Um, this is actually a Kushaw right here, this big thing. Most people see these in the fall and they actually think they're a gourd, which uh -huh. they are not. And they also don't think about eating them. Most people just think about these for decorative purposes. Right. A lot of people have them on their porch or on, uh -huh. you know, use them as centerpieces. They don't actually know that you can cook them and eat them. Okay. Or if they do, they don't know how, because I mean, it's, it's rather large. So it's actually a squat from the squash family? It is, it's a winter squash. And um, the winter squashes that can include your butternut squash, your acorn squash, um, your kushaw, and then pumpkins also um, kind of fall into that category. Okay. So all of those people tend to look at and think are, oh, that's so pretty, or they think it's a gourd, or they want to decorate with it, but you can actually cook and eat all of those things. Okay. I have tried butternut squash and acorn squash and kushaw, all those, and they're, they're good, so. Very good. So that's our kushaw. That is the kushaw. And they're always big. They're always big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what do we do with that thing in order to get to eat it? Exactly, <laughs> to cook it. Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to wash it off like you would any produce. Um, and then uh, what you're going to do is cut it lengthwise. So you're going to cut it that way. Okay. And that's still in a, in a big section. So you can actually, once you cut it lengthwise, cut it into, uh, cut those in half so uh -huh. they're smaller. But what you're going to do is place those down in a baking dish and you bake it at 400 degrees for an hour or until it becomes tender. But by that point in time, it should be. And actually, once you wash it, um, you're, you don't have to take this off of it. Okay. You leave this on and when you cut it up, because once that cooks, that will come off a lot easier than you trying to cut it away before you fix it. Okay. Those actually, they're tough but um, I have baked acorn squash like that and they're really tough and once you bake it, the, the peel kind of just Goes. falls off, so. Well, after 400 degrees for an hour, you know. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> <Right>. intense. <laughs> right. So, okay, so we're gonna cook it and then we take the stuff out of it? Is that what yes. we get? Okay. Well, you're gonna, well, before you bake it, I left that part out. You wanna make sure that you remove all the seeds and all that kind of, you know, gunk that's in it before you okay. bake it. And you can actually roast the seeds of these as well if you want to, but. Oh, okay, it's yeah. kind of like a pumpkin. Right, it is like a pumpkin. And then once it bakes, you can um, scoop that out. That's what's been done here. This is actually some um, kushaw that's been baked like that. And then you scoop it out. And this actually was divided into Ziploc baggies in two cup measurements because what we use it for mainly is this pie recipe okay. and it calls for two cups. So we it looks just, like applesauce. It kind of does. <laughs> it's a little bit darker, but it yeah. kind of does. But we just divided those out in, in two cups in little freezer bags and froze it. Okay. So, so it's something <coughs> excuse me, you can get and then put away for later in the winter right. or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Because actually you were saying these, they're winter squash, but they're in season until about October, right? right. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of out of season now that we're taping this in November, but they're still available. They are. That's one of those pretty things people like to decorate with in the fall, so you yeah. can still find them around. Okay. Doke. They just might be a little bit more pricey than mm -hmm. they were, but you can right. definitely still find them. Okay. So how are we going to make this pie? Well, we're going to start with, like I said, we have two cups of um, cooked mashed kushaw, which is what we have here. We're going to use a fourth a cup of <coughs> butter. Um, a fourth cup of regular white granulated sugar and a half a cup of brown sugar. A teaspoon of lemon extract, and you can kind of taste the lemon a little bit in the pie, and I think it just adds to the flavor. Mm -hmm. um, and one teaspoon of vanilla ex extract, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, a fourth teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and it calls for a nine inch graham cracker pie shell crust, but I've had it with that, and my personal taste, I like the regular dough crust with it better, so that's what I'm using today. If okay. you like graham cracker, that's what the recipe says, and you can definitely use that. It's kind of just your preference. Would that make it more sweet, I guess? It's kind of just a different, different flavor. Different texture. Mm -hmm. okay. And those graham cracker crusts kind of tend to fall apart a little bit more than these stay together, mm -hmm. so that's just my own personal preference to use that. Okay. Sounds good. Right. But we have, we're going to use the two cups of the kushaw, which like I said, this has already been measured out into two cups. We're going to put that in our bowl. And we 
we've gotten this after you've baked your kushal and dug right, it out. Right, right. That's what's been scooped out from it. And, uh, and, like, uh, and we start out with our oven being at 400 degrees, so that's already been okay. preset. <clears throat> and then we're going to mix together our sugar with that. So we need a fourth cup of regular sugar. Get that out of here. So fourth cup, not a lot, but we're going to put some brown sugar in there too, so that's definitely going to add to it. We're going to use a half a cup of brown sugar. Now I also noticed before you put them into your bowl there, you kind of drained out some of the excess um, liquid right. from the Right, well where, where it has been frozen, they you know tend to be get a little watery, so if it is like that, you can definitely just drain that off. Use a half a cup of that. And then we're going to put our um, fourth cup, which is four tablespoons of butter in here. So four tablespoons equal a fourth of a cup. Those measurements are on the back of the butter box. So you yes. all, though those are easily found. That's important. <laughs> it is important to know those. <laughs> we're just going to mix all that together. Mash our butter up. Now, how many people will this... This will just be like a regular pie, so you can cut it into... You can cut it in however big or small you want, but the typical serving size, it'll be um, serve eight. Okay. That's your kind of typical pie size, serving size. I've had the butter out to soften to be mixed up, but you can just cutting that up because it's still a little... Yeah, it's a cold day out, so... <laughs> it is cold. It may take a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> Which it's fine because once it gets in that pie, it'll, mm -hmm. it'll all melt. We'll all get together. So we're mixing them up. So kushal is not just for decorating anymore. It is remember not that. just for decorating. And it's just one of those things that even if you do know you can eat it, people kind of look at it and think, well, what am I going to do with it? You know, what kind of recipe? Mm -hmm. That's one reason why I like these plated up recipes is because it does take produce that people typically don't know how to cook and, and gives you delicious recipes for those. Ideas. Right. Some inspiration for our kushaw pie. Kushaw pie. And this is a plated up recipe, so you can get it from any of the extension offices in Marion, Washington, mm -hmm. Nelson, or yes. wherever around the state. And then we're going to add our two eggs to this. And then next, we're going to put in our lemon extract. Okay. We have a teaspoon of that for that. And so you said you can actually taste the lemon flavor in there, yes, too, Yes, right? you can. It's kind of just a little different flavor from what you're used to. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I've ever had lemon extract. We always hear about vanilla extract. Well, we're going to use some vanilla extract, too. We're going to use a teaspoon of it. I like vanilla. I do too. That and flavor. you can smell the lemon a lot whenever you put it in here. Mm hmm. So we're getting some good flavors in there. We are. And I like this recipe just because it's something different. It's an alternative to a pumpkin pie. A lot of people typically have those for Thanksgiving, so it's just something different to try. Mm -hmm. Put our cinnamon in. Use a fourth a teaspoon of cinnamon. So you can get some variety if you decide to make your kushal pie for the holidays. And if you do, feel free to upload the picture to our Facebook page so we can share everybody and let them know oh, about yes, your kushal please. pie. Oh, yes, please. I would love to know that people are, are using the recipes. I can share those pictures of your perfect pies. <laughs> We're going to use a half teaspoon of nutmeg. Or in my case, it would be the attempt at a pie. <laughs> Practice makes perfect, isn't that what they always say? Exactly. <laughs> Sometimes baking can be tricky. Yeah. With all the, it's uh, more precise than <laughs> cooking, you know, with all the different, you have to have all the right elements there and the right amount. Especially depending on if you're using self-rising flour or all-purpose flour and, you know, you have to add the baking soda and stuff. You need to know what all that means if you're going to bake, so. Yeah, that's why I don't. <laughs> it makes a difference. <laughs> But I enjoy eating it. <laughs> I'm a good taste tester. <laughs> Mix well, it looks good. Up. 
Yeah, and it smells really good. You can definitely smell the spices and the different mm -hmm. extracts in here. Got to kind of smooth that butter out some so it'll be smoother in our pie. I don't want it to lump together. Remember, we're using the dough pie crust, right? Yes. Now you can use the graham cracker crust if you'd rather, whichever you'd prefer. And then it's going to be in there for how long? We actually are going to bake it at 400 degrees to begin, or 400 degrees to begin with, and that's for 15 minutes, and then you actually reduce the temperature to 350, and it's going to stay in there for 45 minutes after that. Oh, wow. Okay. The kushal likes to be hot. Had an hour in there at 400 just to get softened up, and now it's another hour in there <laughs> to be cooked. <laughs> All those pumpkins are so hard, it takes so long mm -hmm. to cook them to get them to that consistency where you can mash them. Yeah. So this is another option for your Thanksgiving or Christmas right. mm -hmm. recipes, or any time. And if you do get one and you take it out, again, you can freeze it, so you can use it even, you could have a Valentine's Day pie if you wanted to, <laughs> if you freeze it, right? Right. I have people, a lot of people come into the office and tell me that they want a different recipe for Thanksgiving or Christmas. We tend to fall into those holiday traditions and making the same thing. So it's nice to, to get an idea for an alternative. Mm -hmm. But the traditions are nice there too. The traditions are nice. <laughs> we definitely have traditional food at my house. Yes. Okay, and once that gets mixed together, you're just going to pour that into the, the pie shell. So. That was easy enough. The hard part's getting your kusha cooked beforehand mm -hmm. and getting that mashed up to actually make the pie filling is simple. Ooh. And then we're going to cook that for an hour and then you'll have a great pie in the end. Again, this has been kusha pie. Mm -hmm. So another option for you for the holidays. And it has kusha that, that you have to cook and prepare. Can you buy uh, already like just the the like guts of the kushal kind of like you can buy the canned pumpkin yeah can, canned kushal that's it you can with the pumpkin you can buy that can because it's you know people use that a lot for thanksgiving the other squashes you actually um i don't know maybe at a bigger supermarket that offers more variety you might be able to find those i'm not sure but around right. here that's not something that you're going to find in the grocery so yeah but so you have to make your own kushal. But it'd be fun. Well, and um, the cans of those aren't very high. They're usually a dollar or something, depending on what size you get. But if you purchase one, you know, these are probably going to be a little more expensive. But when you cook it, you get so much out of it that the price kind of equals out. It's just a little yeah. more trouble. Yeah. But you know when, whenever you do it yourself and you actually buy the product it tastes so much better than what comes in the can. Even if what comes in the can tastes good that the you know that always tastes better. And it's something different right? So, right. Very good. So it's been Kushaw Pie. I've been here with Lizzie Spalding. We're going to cook this for an hour and you then are. you get to eat it. Yes. Right? So. Something good for Thanksgiving. Exactly. Thank you very much. No problem. And happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Yes. All right. This has been Gary White with Lizzie Spalding at the Marion County Extension Office.